In this video, you're gonna learn which of these 21 controversial sleep topics are overrated or underrated. So you don't have to waste your time trying stuff that just doesn't work. But to make sure we're getting the best quality information, I'll be asking Dr. Chris Winter, a renowned sleep doctor that has written two books and works with a shit ton of professional sports teams to optimize their athletic performance. First up, we have habits that anyone can do. Not using your phone before bed. Overrated in the sense that there is an impact there, but I always, hear these advices, you know, don't be on your phone, don't be on a television the two hours before you go to bed. What am I supposed to do? I mean, the golden bachelor is not going to watch itself. So being on your phone a little bit before you go to bed or watching a TV show before you go to bed does not prevent you from having great sleep. I would be more concerned about using it when you wake up in the middle of the night. I think that can be a little bit more detrimental. Regular exercise. Underrated. I think because people are like, well, we've heard that before. I don't think you can hear it enough. It's underrated. Getting eight hours of sleep. Wildly overrated. A, I think seven is probably healthier than eight if you look at actually the body of evidence that we have that seems that seven is really the perfect spot for the average individual in terms of health risk. So just keep in mind, eight is a sort of antiquated average we talk about. There's nothing wrong with it, but it might not be right for you. Having a consistent bedtime and wake up time. Wake up time is underrated. Bedtime slightly overrated in the sense that I think it's good to have a target for your bedtime. But if you're not particularly sleepy, I think that stresses a lot of people out when their bedtime's 11 and for whatever reason, 11 rolls around, they're not sleepy. They get really worked up about that. To me, it's all about consistent wake up time will eventually lead to a consistent bedtime. Morning and evening sunlight exposure. Probably underrated. I think getting up and getting outside and getting more, having your breakfast outside. You don't have to stare at the sun or something like that, but getting out and doing that is really important. And then the flip side in the evening, keeping things relatively dark. I always tell people romantically lit. Like your partner should come home from work in the evening and be like, what's the occasion? And you're like, no occasion. It's just good sleep night. All right, next we have systems. These are things that you can set up once and they become the gift that keeps on giving in your house because they happen automatically every single day. Blackout blinds. Absolutely underhyped. I, I think taking the time to make your room not just dark, but very dark can really make a difference. I mean, most people have had the experience of, oh, we stayed in a place and it was pitch black. And, you know, when we woke up, we forgot to set alarms and we woke up at 1130. Right. Because when you sleep in total darkness, even when the sun's out, it's very disoriented. And so I think it can really help with, you know, sleep quality. Sleeping in a cold room. Underhyped. Yeah, I, I think a three degree change and gone from 70 to 67 can really make a difference in a lot of people. And so I, I think that's that's a fun experiment to do. Again, don't believe me, just bump your thermostat down three degrees from where you typically sleep for the next week or two and see how you feel. Automated smart red lights. I would say that's probably underrated. I think that that lighting we expose ourselves to in the hour or two before we go to bed is really important. And if you can automate the thermostat or automate the lighting, I think it makes it even better. I've got every intention of doing the right thing. I sometimes forget or I get wrapped up in stuff. I'm like, oh my God, I never turned the temperature down, right? You know, I'm doing it as we go to bed or we get in bed, like it's kind of hot, isn't it? Oh my God, I forgot the temperature. So I think those things are, are really cool. Light and temperature affect our sleep dramatically. It's surprising we don't put a bit more effort into those types of things. Automated white noise machines. They're probably a little overrated because we talk about them a lot, but at the same time, I think they're essential. I travel with a little one just because I worry about getting into a loud hotel room. So I just I want that control over the situation. So I like the ability for a white noise to sort of conditioned environment. So we use one. I mean, we've used one for a very long time. And so because you use it at home, when you go on the road, you use a similar one, it kind of creates that same sound no matter where you're at. I'd say it's probably a little overrated, even though I'm a connoisseur. Temperature controlled mattresses. Underrated. If somebody said to me, look, you don't know me, give me one tip for better sleep. My guess is, hey, buy one of those things and I have no financial relationship with any of them. I think that would dramatically change the way a lot of people sleep, not just you know, postmenopausal women are having hot flashes, but anyone, and I personally sleep with one. I won't tell you which one it is, but it's a game changer. And this is perfect timing because now I wanna thank 8sleep for sponsoring this video. I've been using mine for the last two years and I freaking love it. It's been a game changer. It allows you to cool or warm your bed, which for me, 
meant that I don't have to worry about overheating and not being able to fall asleep. Like I freaking love this thing and so do a crap ton of top performers. Plus what's really cool is you can set a heat or vibration alarm and you also get sleep data. If you'd like to get one for yourself, 8sleep is giving an additional discount for all of you beautiful people. So if you'd like to get one for yourself, click the link in the description. Clicking that link actually helps support this channel and use code Mike for that discount. Next, we have products that will improve your sleep. Eye masks. Underrated. If you give 100 people an eye mask and tell them to wear it for two weeks, I'll bet you 50 of them will, will not go back to not wearing it. Light is really you know, an issue. And if you live in a place where you have skylights, you can't make your room that dark or you've got little lights and fire alarm lights and your partner reads their book at night, you know, whatever. I just think that's great. Sleep trackers. Underrated. I, I feel like in general, they get a little bit of a bad rap. I think a lot of my peers kind of go after their you know, accuracy, which there's value valid points for that. I think a lot of times too, people purchase them and think by simply putting them on their wrist, they're going to sleep better. I mean, I've asked patients, you know, I'm struggling so bad. I bought this thing and they showed me this thing on the wrist. How'd that work? It didn't do anything. Well, what did you expect to happen? They have no idea. Like almost like they felt like they were going to put it on the wrist. It was going to send a signal to their brain to make them sleep better. Like I, I think knowledge is where all good habits start. So I, I think that those things are really powerful in terms of giving us a more honest look at ourselves, even if they're not specific to the minute. Earplugs. I would say underrated. I think silence is is fantastic. And earplugs can be whatever you want them, cheapy little foam things or you know, more, more high tech. I've got some noise canceling ones that are not Bluetooth, which is really cool because it eliminates that urge to sync with your phone and listen to a podcast where they just cancel noise and quiet, dark, Cool is really sleep promoting. Blue light blocking glasses. I'm going to say overrated just because a lot of people know about them. I think that the blue blocking glasses that have an actual yellow, you know, speaking of YouTube, Bono kind of lens are probably underrated in the sense that I've got this thing called a spectrometer that you can hold it up to a light and then look through the spectrometer, you can see the visible spectrum of light. And then if you take a lens and put it in front of the spectrometer, you can see what it does to that spectrum. Personally, I have never been presented with a pair of blue blocking glasses that have a clear lens that do anything. And I've even shown people, here are your glasses. Okay, look at the spectrum. Now I'm putting your glasses in front. Now I'm gonna put my blue blocking glasses with the super yellow lens in front. And they're like, oh my gosh, the blue green just disappeared. Exactly. How that translates into a sleep effect is, is difficult to measure. That study hasn't been done. But if you're trying to do that and you believe it, and I do, I've worn those things. And I would say, just make sure that they're truly doing what they say they do. Mouth taping. Overhyped. I think it's ridiculous. I guess I, I like breathing through my nose. And I mean, I, yeah, it's uncomfortable when you've got a cold to breathe through your mouth. But, you know, it's funny. Number one, most people breathe through their nose. And if you work in a sleep lab and watch people sleep all the time, you realize that. Number two, even if your mouth is open, most people still breathe through their nose. To me, it's all about humility. Hey, guys, I've developed this tape that helps you breathe through your nose. It, might make your sleep a little bit more comfortable. And the problem is that's not the dialogue that I'm hearing people talk about. Hey, are you a short man and want to be a tall man? Want to be attractive with members of the opposite? It's mouth taping. Like it's plus, I, I, you know, I think it's a little dangerous. I, I don't like the idea of closing people's emesis exit portals while they sleep at night. No, I think that we have mouths for a reason and we should probably just kind of leave them open, but. Yeah, I'm not a big fan of it. Finally, we have supplements, which I'm defining as substances that we consume that we think improves our sleep. Magnesium three and eight. You know, it's, it's, I would say overhyped. Again, it takes me six hours to fall asleep. Magnesium is not gonna salute, solve your problem. But it was interesting. I was talking to a guy with an NBA team I worked for, and he said, Chris, you'd be surprised how many elite NBA athletes show up at training camp magnesium deficient. And I said, why do you think that is? He said, well, I asked a nutritionist and the nutritionist said it's probably because of the way we produce food on such a mass scale. Like the lettuce you eat is sort of different than the green lettuce you ate 20 years ago in terms of how much nutrient content it's developed because the soil's been turned over so many times, it's grown hydroponically, whatever. So he said, you know, magnesium deficiencies are way more common now than he saw 20 years ago. So I think I would change my mind about that, that 
there might be a lot more people who could use magnesium than before. And I do think the way the magnesium is delivered, what it's bound to does matter. I think that's maybe underhyped. Maybe that's, uh, I'll change my opinion on that. A pigeon in. Isn't that what's in chamomile tea? I think that when somebody has said for generations, something works, science has a very interesting way of figuring it out down the line that probably helps. I mean, I don't think that it's overhyped. Again, we think about supplements. My typical conversation about that is if you're using a supplement to supplement your sleep, I think that's a great idea. I'm a pretty good sleeper, Chris, but I'd like to take it from 96% to 98%. Hey, I think a little chamomile before you go to bed, which I drink a lot of, could do that. Hey, Chris, my sleep's been a disaster for three years. I'm lucky if I get one hour of sleep. Which chamomile do you think I should buy? I, you're barking up the wrong tree. Like we have a whole, whole other sort of situation we need to deal with. So I think it's really how you come to these products is really what you're going to get out of them. L-theanine. Overhyped. I mean, you know, balanced diet, making sure you're getting good amino acids in there. You're probably going to be fine. I, I don't think that that the way I see that conversed about, I don't think it's really that helpful, but it's, it's fine. It's not harmful. Again, supplement, you know, it's trying to make things just a little bit better is fine. Alcohol. Terrible. I don't know what the ratings are, but that's the worst. I'm not anti-alcohol. If you like to use alcohol when you go out socially, that's fine. Just understand there's nothing about it that is positive in terms of your sleep. So I often get the answer, well, I hear what you're saying, but just for me personally, it really helps me unwind and sleep better. I don't know if it helps you unwind or not. I mean, it is an anxiolytic chemical, it is not making you sleep better. So choose alcohol because you want to choose alcohol separate that from I'm choosing alcohol because I think in the end I will sleep better. You might be sedated better, but you are absolutely not going to sleep better. Cannabis. Cannabis is a, it's a similar answer in terms of alcohol. I'm not anti-cannabis. I think from a neuropathic pain perspective to generalized anxiety disorder, there may be evidence that these things can be helpful. I think from the perspective of the products are very unregulated. And when it comes to actually improving the quality of your sleep, particularly for chronic users of cannabis, it, there's no good evidence that says it is. In fact, it's probably making your, your sleep worse. So I just think we need to move away from the idea that we can find chemicals chemicals that are enhancing sleep, they generally just enhance sleepiness and sedation. And, and that's really about the end of it. Melatonin. Oh, overhyped. The supreme. If there's a kingdom of overhype, melatonin is lord and overseer of the domain. It's overhyped because number one, it's not a sleep aid. It's a timing aid. It's not designed to make your child or you fall asleep every night. Number two, when you look at those big Canadian and US studies that were just released, you don't really know what you're taking in terms of, like you said, there could be none in there. It could be three times what's on the bottle. So it's sort of like presenting a bunch of chefs with a bag full of groceries and saying, what can we make with this? And they're like, well, what's in the bag? And like, well, I'm not going to tell you. So people always ask me, how can I best use melatonin? I can't answer the question because I have no idea what's in the bottle you're taking. I want to give a massive thank you to Dr. Chris Winter for taking the time to share all of his knowledge with us to support him as well. If you want to continue learning about this, you can check out his podcast called Sleep Unplugged. He talks about a lot of the topics that we talked about today. Or you can check out his socials or his books to continue learning on your sleep journey. If you like this video, be sure to hit the subscribe button and click the notification bell because I have a lot more videos about sleep, nutrition, and exercise coming your way.